Potawatomi, arts, culture, and entertainment. This is a Pace production. Thank you. Uh, I assume most of you are from the area, so you understand where Lewis Central is. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is a group of people that lived here a long time ago that are technically the earliest inhabitants that we know of, of this area. And although not much is talked about in the way of history around Council Bluffs, that's one of the reasons why I'm here, so I can shed light on some of these things that we don't know about. History about Council Bluffs, that is a fascinating location that nobody knows about, because really all you hear about is General Dodge and this location. start off with 13 PW5. The first things first, let's go into a little bit of nomenclature. And that's just a fancy word for words I'm going to use. Um, 13 PW5, uh, that is a system designed by the Smithsonian uh, when they used to send out archaeologists. What it means is the 13 stands for the state of Iowa. PW stands for Potawatomi County. And then the 005 or 0005, technically, is the When you see somebody say, or hear somebody say 13 PW5, you know that's the second. We will be talking about things. Everybody here has found them somewhere around this location. Everybody says to me, arrowheads, we found these arrowheads. Well, unfortunately, in anthropology, you have to call them the jet offerings because you can't assume what their purpose was. Unless, of course, you have something next to it that says, a nice three volume work that says, on Thursday, I used this to scrape <laughs> things up. You know. But since you don't have that, you have to just say. Number three, bundle burger. No, it's not like your phone plan or with your Cox. Um, bundle burial is a kind of a burial in which uh, the dead are put into bundles, and they're put down like this to make them easier to carry. We'll talk about Horizon, that is a, when you're doing archaeology, that's basically one layer of artifacts and culture. And then you dig down and dig below that to see if there's another. Uh, ossuary, that is just a collection of bones. Typically, a collection of bones is the equivalent of our cemetery did it, did it back then, and very often we don't know that the bones are there, as in this case. Borrow, uh, that's going to be a slight geologic term uh, for when people take dirt from one place and put it in another. I don't know if it originally meant that we're going to borrow some of this and give it back. I don't know. And then late archaic, this is the time frame that we're talking about with the individuals that were found at the Lewis Central Archaeological Site. And pictures, everybody, pictures. So this is 1975. This is, if you're heading south on Harry Langdon Boulevard, uh, this right here is where the current entrance to Titan Hill is. And then you drive on up, and then you on up to the school. You'll notice these guys standing here. Well, before Lewis Central bought the land, uh, well, you can kind of see where the bluff was. You can kind of see how it's curved out here. And this is where that term borrow comes from, is that this area was the road crews and Iowa public roads and the national interstate system borrowed dirt from this location. They took it right off of the bluff and so that's why it's kind of a weird shape and then up like this. None of this up here is developed. This happened, they discovered this site within the first day. As a matter of fact, they destroyed some of the site when they were backing it over with the backhoe. And let's see, next step. Okay, everybody knows Tasty Treat. This is a great picture because this is before Tasty Treat moved. Tasty Treat in 1975, and I remember it when I was younger, Tasty Treat used to be where the parking lot for the Wabash Trail uh, bike trail is today. It has since moved to the other side, so this gives you another perspective of where, it, where it's at. 
one of the most fun things to do when you find these pictures is to see how things were and then just little details like they have hamburgers here but apparently only one cheeseburger <laughs> and then and then also they have french fries here thank god they put that because i would have thought they would have come from brazil so uh next up is okay so this is a, a better a better site this is the archaeologist truck uh what happened was what as i said when they started doing the construction on the site Immediately, the construction workers, who are not known to be archaeologists typically, found these bones. They backed over them with the backhoe, noticed they were bones. <laughs> and at presentations I've done about this topic before, I've had audience members come up to me and tell me that, you know what, our relative worked construction on that site. They found the skulls, and in some cases, they would put the skulls on top of the backhoe on the smokestack to see the smoke flowing out of the eye sockets. So, just to give an indication <laughs> that this happened, but when, when they realized that they were human bones, they called the local coroner, who originally went to Omaha to get an archaeologist and realized that he had to use the same state, so finally, this Iowa State archaeologists came down. This is their truck. This is the dig. And the road, the, right here is where the road is today that leads up to Titan Hill. And this is, ironically, a picture from right where Tasty Treat is today, looking where Tasty Treat used to be. Yeah. Um, and these two uh, are archaeologists. Uh, well, I'm sorry, this is the coroner, and I forget what his name was, but he, this is one of the archaeologists who wrote the report and the analysis that I have taken from. I've talked to him a few times. I had some kids doing National History Day about four years ago, and they just decided to do it on 13PW3. So I talked to them, and we had interviews over the phone, and it was good fun. And so there's another picture of them here. Uh, and you can kind of see how the bluff is, is formed. It was, it was the same time of year. It was late October, early November, back when Novembers were cold all the time. And you can see the frost on the ground. One of the things they talked about in their report is that they had very little money, very little time. Lewis Central wanted them to hurry up and get this done because construction on Lewis Central, even on the road, they couldn't even get up to where the building was supposed to be because they had to stop for this burial. And this was certainly par for the course for everywhere in the United States when they would come upon native burials and uh, everybody wanted, in the name of progress, to get moving. Let's get these out of here and get moving. Also at the time, though, there was an added feature that, which was also par for the course at the time. Anthropologists and uh, archaeologists would, were always at odds with native tribes when they would discover native bones in a location. And we'll get to more of that later. But the fact is, they had very little, few resources and they were on a time crunch. And the weather was bad. Uh, there's another picture there. The analysis says uh, once they got the artifacts and the bones out of this site, they did the research on it based on some of the evidence, how the burials were happening, and I'll, I will go over some of that here in a few minutes. And they discovered that the bodies were 2,800 years old. And that those are late archaic bodies. Now, it's not the oldest site on the Missouri River. There are some further north that are 6,000 years old. But it's the only late archaic site on this side of the state. And we know so very little about them. We don't know where they went. We don't know what happened to them. There has not been any genetic studies. Genetics has taken anthropology and archaeology a long ways in the last 10 years. But nobody knows because we don't, we have very few artifacts left, and I will talk about why here in a few, to make a connection with 
all I can tell you is that none of the modern native tribes are related. None of the tribes that we know of were here at this time, 2,800 years ago. Most of them didn't get here until the late 16th or 17th century, and mostly as a result of being forced west by the arrival of Europeans in the east. And the, I, I always love uh, the site that uh, this is on. This is on the, off the state archaeology site, and I originally downloaded uh, the first pictures about 10 years ago when I first started researching this. And I, I went back to there and re-downloaded them because they're so much clearer now. Uh, you can see so many details, well, including this guy's rear end. Who knew? Uh, the guy in the hat, I'll show you here in a minute. You notice that they are putting down markers. When archaeologists go to a site, they have to establish a grid system. In that fashion, they can document meticulously where in the ground, or in situ, as it were, in the situation, the Latin, Latin words always come back to bite you when you go into anthropology or paleontology or history or medicine. Um, so in situ, right where they were found, so that way future generations can go back and say, oh, oh, this is where that was, okay. Um, this guy in the hat turned out to be my uh, archaeology professor at Iowa State. His, that's Dr. David Gradwall, and I didn't know until we were out on a dig uh, on the northern Missouri, uh, Des Moines River, and he just happened to mention that he was in uh, Council Bluffs in 1975. I said, really? Me too. Um, so you can see them establishing the grid system, and they are starting on the horizon. They flattened out this part, and they're going to go down little by little. They start with the big shovels, and then they, when they find something, then they go work uh, more meticulously with more specific tools. And uh, we'll get a better shot of these tools here in a minute. And, and this is a great shot because uh, this is right where the uh, parking lot for the uh, Wabash Trail is now. And again, you can, there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on back here. I'm not going <laughs> to remark on what it might be, but uh, when, you, when you look at these pictures long enough, you, you find some crazy things going on in the background. And uh, that, his name is Dwayne. He wrote the majority of the paper of the archaeological analysis. He is now in his 60s. And uh, I've talked to him, and he told me it was, even though it was, you know, only November, it was the coldest November he's ever spent. And there's my professor again, Dr. David Gradwall. And you can see the roadway here, so this gives you some perspective. Am I too far away? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, here, I'll come back over here. I can go from the, from the other side. Um, and you can see them using the shovels, and they're going through... Uh, this person has found something, and I couldn't get close enough, I couldn't zoom in close enough to find out exactly what he found, but you can see that he's got a marker there. So he has found something, and now he's gone to a trowel. So he's dropped the shovel, and he's gone to a trowel because he found something, and that is the method by archae the, that archaeologists practice their craft. Okay, this is a very unique uh, diagram because it shows, and I will try to highlight here a little bit, uh, it shows how, uh, where the roadway is. This is the edge of the pa pavement. Uh, this is one of the backhoe trenches that they uh, backed over some of the, the bones with. And this was the edge of the bluff. So they made two trenches, one here, one here. And then this is the grid system that they formed. You can see how they did the grid system. And then in a, oh, and then you can see the borrow area. Maybe they'll... You'd hate to think that, you know, in a couple of years that the federal government would bring back, you know, 170 tons of soil back to the Barrow area. Here, we brought it back. Uh, okay, and I guess you've seen that one. Let's see. Okay, now this is where we get to see that some of the meticulous nature of the, the archaeology. Uh, there's Dr. Gradwall down there. Uh, they found, they've stopped at this particular horizon, and they are digging out some things you can see. Uh, these sticks here, these things here highlight where they have found something important. 
and they found a lot of bones here, 25 individuals, parts of 25 individuals as a matter of fact, some as young as six months, some as old as 65 uh, roughly, and you know, it's always, it's always a guesstimate until you get the bones actually in there. Um, and several of them had, uh, somebody had arthritis, uh, several had den uh, massive dental problems, uh, so it, they did a, pathi a paleopathology report on, the, on these people and determined that, you know, they were fairly healthy, very active, uh, but the one person did have uh, arthritis. Okay, now this is another a great example, and I tried to hone in on the tools of the craft of the archaeologists and the technology at the time, like this uh, box of tinfoil. They would take out the bones and wrap them in tinfoil. So, uh, you know, you'd hate to have your sandwich wrapped in tinfoil. And then, oops, oh. Um, so anyway, and, and here they, again, they, they have gone, they have stopped the massive digging and gone with the trowels again. Um, this is showing you a whole section that they've taken off and it, I, this is where, according to the, uh, the site map that I showed you uh, before, uh, they had found a couple of artifacts in there, and I was trying to get a picture of the artifacts, but I couldn't quite get it. But he, this little guy here is marking where they found one. And so that, that was his, instead I got his muddy shoes. So that was, that's an artifact in and of itself. Okay, uh, another tool of the trade is this box that was dual purpose for throwing all your gar garbage in. And, uh, you know, they, cer they certainly wouldn't treat the bones and the artifacts this way, but their own tools, they would. Uh, there's the, uh, uh, <laughs> there's the tinfoil again. And you can see the shovels and the camera. Everything was documented meticulously again. And every time there is a an archaeological dig. All of this goes on. A lot of people don't know what goes on, and it is fascinating to see. There was so much wind, you can see they put up a wind barrier there, which was probably somebody's pants, I guess. I don't know. There, it, it's so funny, I can't remember the last time that I, I have seen a picture of Dr. Gradwell where I could see his whole face. Uh, he was uh, known for that. And he, this is the site map he's got here. And you can see how they're documenting 13 PW5 here. Uh, they have, now this box and this box likely have bones in them. And as a matter of fact, you can see a juvenile uh, skull cap right there. That's a cranium. Uh, another picture of the camera. And typically, uh, they don't show if they can help it. Um, when they're excavating the bones, especially in 1975 when there was such a hubbub about Native Americans and being treated with disrespect, and I believe rightfully so. So uh, anthropologists on their own said, okay, let's not take pictures of Native American bones being exhumed if we can help it. And it was the Omaha tribe, by the way, that advocated for the people that we have here, the late archaic people, there is irony in the fact that the Omaha are not related to them, and yet they advocated them for them being a, a native tribe. So it's like having another family advocate for you against other families with really no <laughs> qualifications. So, um, and, and you can see the windbreak again. He's got snow on his cap, so you know it was cold. And they've parked. Halfway up the hill, the truck looks like it's about ready to fall over, so you know that they parked so they could get out of there as fast as possible. Okay, here are some artifacts uh, that they found. Uh, here are some of the projectile points. And again, every time you say an arrowhead, you're assuming function, and you just can't do that because maybe somewhere down the line you find it on something else, like a giant nose picker or something, and then you'll feel really stupid later on that, oh, I thought it was an arrowhead. And uh, this right here we know 
uh, from other uh, parts was used as a scraper. And I took a class at Iowa State in my part of my anthropology degree. I used to have, my fingers used to be a lot longer until I took that class. And when you try to make one of these uh, scrapers, when you try to make a stone tool, you have to use a harder surface, a harder piece of rock, and flake off pit bits. And I damaged my hands almost beyond belief, and I decided that I'm never going to try that again. But it's actually a very, it's a very good skill and very difficult, at least it was for me. But this is the way that it's flaked. Uh, scientists and anthropologists can determine how old it was, uh, what level of technology was being used, even without the bones. And that's why they call it late archaic. The late archaic period ended roughly 1,000 BCE, before the Common Era, or BC for those of us old enough to remember when that used to be the, the nomenclature, as it were. Uh, and then you have a couple of rollers here. Uh, some of these are stone, some of these are deer, antler, and bone. This is some of the pottery that they found, and they always have a uh, ruler in there to give you some sort of uh, idea of how big it is. And again, this technology was late archaic technology in the pottery. This is an awl. This is a deer antler awl that was carved from deer antler bone and uh, presumably was used to puncture uh, animal skin to make clothing. And this is here. Every one of these is one centimeter. And so that's the scale. So you can see how big it was for scale. And that's how they found it in situ. And they, this is the picture that they actually took. And here is the awl again after they've taken it out, and that is a projectile point. Now, these shells are, uh, were found uh, in the site. It was an ossuary, uh, in essence, what it was, what it was. And these are things that were buried with the bodies. One of the things in anthropology, one of the hardest things to determine is ritual. There are four levels that anthropologists or archaeologists can say about a site or a people with any degree of certainty without historical or archival evidence. The first is subsistence, like what did they eat? You know. Uh, the second is tools, what was their technology level? The third uh, is political, social, and the fourth finally is magico-religious. When they find things like these that were obviously taken from the river and they find them in a grave, we have no idea why. We didn't even know these people existed in this location until this discovery. We haven't found any people like this anywhere near here since this discovery in 1975. So we don't know why they were buried uh, with them we know that they were buried in the ossuary with 25 individuals. We know that the individuals were, hold on. Oh, let me show you these first. Okay, uh, the bones were taken from the ossuary from the site and they were taken by the archeologists to the lab at Iowa Western. This is Iowa Western Community College because it was the closest available. And you can see here, there's some femurs. Uh, we have some skulls of the 25 individuals. So all of these tables were utilized for study of the bones. And the idea that they reached with the native tribe, with the Omaha specifically, is that the anthropologists would take some of the bones, take small samples, take them for a couple of three, couple three weeks, and then hand them back over to the Omaha and the Omaha would then reinter the, the bones in the fashion that they saw fit. This became the template used here at Lewis Central for the rest of the state ever since and for much of the rest of the country. 
So if you go around the country, and I know how many of you visit archaeological sites around the country. I know. Everybody's, am I the only one raising my hand? Okay. All right. So anyway, if you go around, they will have their maps about certain sites and all of that. And then they'll say, Lewis Central Archaeological Site is the coolest thing uh, for me to go around. If I'm in Virginia, and it says Lewis Central Archaeological Site, and so Lewis Central is actually known archaeologically. Uh, it's pretty, pretty important. And uh, again, the, what ended up happening with the bones is after the archaeologists were done with them and they handed them over to the Omaha, they took them about two miles away and reburied them in Lewis Township Cemetery oh. in an unmarked grave. Um, I, I did reach out to the people at uh, Lewis Township Cemetery and uh, at Cutler Funeral Home. William Cutler was the one in charge of handling the transfer and he of course is not alive and the caretaker remembers him and the caretaker does not know which of the 11 unmarked graves belong to the natives. They were all put in one grave and uh, nobody at the funeral homes knows anything about it. His sons don't know anything about it. So the most I can tell you is that these individuals you see on these, on these tables are at Lewis Township Cemetery somewhere. This guy uh, was, it was nice of Sylvester Stallone getting off the set of Nighthawks to come down and help with the archaeology. Um, he looks just as bewildered as he did in the film. And again, you can see uh, quite a few of the bones, and I won't get into all the particulars. Uh, however, uh, this is the back of a head. That's the uh, sagittal suture there. Uh, I can talk about that sort of stuff for 16 hours. So, Okay, now this is the uh, main body of evidence uh, that was produced by the archaeologists. These are the four people here. Uh, Dr. Gradwall was the archaeologist, the archaeologist in charge. So he let his students do the field work and uh, type up the, the analysis. And what they said really is that they think that these people were a, a semi-nomadic people that would branch out in the winter time when uh, resources were scarce and travel around and then meet up again every spring. So. During their time apart, when someone would die, they would put them in bundles, these burial bundles. I can only imagine how many years it took before they decided to put their dead in a burial bundle. Being out, you know, number one, they didn't live in houses. We don't know exactly what kind of house they lived in. We didn't find any evidence of that. But you have to imagine that if you're living in some, time of, in some type of an outdoor dwelling, you're not keeping dead Aunt Sally in the, in the tent with you. So she stays outside. And then inevitably during the night, your wife wakes you up and says, someone's chewing on grandma again. The dogs are outside chewing on grandma. Something has to be done. So they put them in these bundles to carry them around for the whole year until they meet up with the larger tribe in the spring and summer. And then they bury all of their dead together in an ossuary, like the one discovered at, the at 13 PW5. And I always imagine, I always tease my son, that he's of the age now that he would be the one responsible for carrying dead Aunt Sally uh, in the burial bundle that was hung in the trees because that was the solution to keep the wolves from eating dead Aunt Sally. And uh, so now she's hanging in a tree for, the, for nine months, and he has to carry her. It's his job to carry her every day when they decide to go back towards the other group. And you know that they were looking forward to that spring meeting. <sighs> anyway, I can't get him to take out the trash. But I get him to take out dead Aunt Sally. OK, so. Um, and this is, uh, this, this part, I highlighted this part, or I included this in the presentation because this discusses the 
our, the Lewis Central site as the template for dealings between anthropologists and native tribes from here on out. And I just want to point out that this says uh, the Iowa Code was found to be inadequate beforehand and uh, there was no report and also there is a site in Glenwood of much older, it's a much older site, uh, I'm sorry, it's a much more recent site uh, from a thousand years ago, what's called uh, the Glenwood culture and apparently they messed it up and I just want to say it was Glenwood's fault because I went to Lewis Central. So, uh, and that's what they say here is they say that it's really Glenwood's fault that there was such a big uproar between Native American communities because bad things happened during that uh, particular site. Um, and just, I just wanted to show you a little bit about how these archeological analyses read. So I don't know how many of you read these on a consistent basis, but I love reading them. This is the kind of stuff that, uh, you know, I like to lay awake at night reading these things. And there's so much, there's so much funny in there, just like when it said Glenwood, it was Glenwood's fault. But uh, it's very detailed, and this gives you an idea of, of how these things are. It's very cold. It's not very, you know, there's no humor in it, except unless you find it on your own. Uh, okay, I wanted to show you this because this shows you a side profile of the bluff when they were doing the site. This is uh, that one, from that one picture, you can see the top of the bluff there. And this is where I talked about the borrow. So in the 20s, between 1920 and 19. Uh, 69, this was, there was soil removed here for the bar. This is the side of the bluff, and this, these, they made little sketches of where they found the bones. And this is from the side view. And this is roughly the, the road right there. And this is from a top view, and this is, again, when they make the grid system, they can make this map and show you where each bone was found. And they, they write uh, in so much detail, even the orientation that the bones were found in. Now, these are all bundle burials right here. These are all bags of bones. Uh, so many dead ant sallies. How many dead ant sallies can you have? Um, and then these, these bodies were articulated. And articulated means that they were together intact. And this is the exact orientation that they were found in. So that's how they, that's how they determined what this, bur what this ossuary was used for, because you wouldn't need a bundle burial if you were a sedentary people, and you just buried your people you know, all in a grave. You wouldn't need that. So form follows function. So if you have bundle burials, especially that many, and then a couple of articulated, that means that a couple people died during their annual meeting, and then they had all these that died when the group was split up. Uh, this is artifact analysis, and we talked about the awls and the flakes uh, and the side, uh, the projectiles, projectile points. Uh, and it's so great because this, this, these citations are where they tell you that that's why you're supposed to say projectile point. Now this is a nice timeline of Iowa archaeology and where things fall. So these are the sites, these are northern Iowa, and these are the early archaic, and that's 6,000 years before the present, so that's roughly 8,000 years ago. And this is where Lewis Central's, this is where Lewis Central falls. So that's 2,800 years ago, and it's late archaic, but nothing, and there certainly have been sites found, like I said, in Glenwood, uh, part of the Glenwood phase, uh, part of the Nebraska culture. Um, I won't get too into detail about those things. But you can see there are a number of sites in western Iowa, mostly northern Iowa, northern western Iowa, that are thousands and thousands of years old. And they're just as fascinating. The, the problem is, all we know about these people are from these sites, and very little evidence. So when people tell you they know what these people were like, we don't really. We only know what the evidence tells us. And you have to be careful with the evidence because it can only tell you so much. Um, and this, um, 
this is basically telling you the same thing I just did about the articulation and the extremities. Uh, okay, this is a nice piece of uh, resource that I found. This is a phase one cultural resource investigation for Highway 275 reconstruction. We call it Harry Langdon Boulevard. And this was done in 1998. And they were doing the study for about roadside, uh, about going through Highway 275 and what they should do if while they're digging auger, they, what they do is they drop an auger down to put telephone poles in addition to some road work. And what they discovered is that right by Lewis Central, they found more shells just by putting these telephone poles down. And what the, what this woman, uh, wait, wait, where's she at? Uh, Leah Rogers, the investigator, what she said was that 13 PW5 was, what they found was probably not all there is to find. That there's probably stuff still there. And it's highly likely that it is. Uh, Freshwater mussel shells encountered along this slope were brought to locations by humans. Um, it's doubtful that enough of the Site 13 PW5 remains undisturbed to be considered a National Register eligible site. I get asked that a lot. Um, why, why isn't it a site? Why hasn't Lewis Central looked into making it a site, done any more archaeology? Uh, I can tell you that money is a big issue. I've talked to the school board of Lewis Central in the last couple of months, and I, you know, every couple of years I talk to them about it, and they say, "Oh yes, that's wonderful that we, you know, we're that site," um, but they don't seem to have any, any interest in pursuing any of the avenues that they possibly could. Certainly not reopening some sort of archaeological dig. Uh, however, according to this report, just done 20 years ago, there's likely a lot more there. Um, and this is the paleopathology of the archaic ossuary at the Lewis Central School site. And this describes all of the fun things that I talked to you about, uh, arthritis and all those things about the 25 individuals. And these are some of the articles in the nonpareil uh, concerning uh, from 1975. Um, so he brought, and they were talking about the archaeology students uh, coming down and a 10 foot mound of dirt was removed. Uh, this one you can't see very well, uh, but right here it says begin work Monday on old bones. <laughs> Love that one. And this is where Lewis Central uh, tried to get a court order to get the bones out of the ground as fast as possible and into, uh, into Lewis Township Cemetery. The irony, <laughs> the, the irony of being in the ground in your own uh, in your own grave site for 2,800 years to be removed and sent down the road two miles <laughs> to be put back in. Uh, this, is, this is always a touchy subject for me because I do work for Lewis Central. And I grew up there, I grew up at Lewis Central and played all sorts of sports for them and broke bones there and all those sorts of stuff like that. Uh, so I'm, I'm very proud of Lewis Central, but at the same time, I always wonder why, and I know it's a different culture and you can't take stuff out of the cultural context. That's it's so important when you're considering the history of something. But I always wondered how neat it would be if they would have put the bones back right where they found them. I mean, they built them. I mean, the road that they have going up to the middle school went around it anyway. It was right there. And if they put a marker there, they would have been seen as probably the most progressive school district in the state, if not the country. And then you have your ossuary right where it was supposed to be. And then the Omaha are pretty happy with you, and as well as the other native tribes. And talk about a teachable moment for generations to come. Uh, I went into anthropology and I didn't even need that. I didn't even know about it. But if I would have known about it back then, oh, it would have been incredible. Um, this is more about the 
uh, article or about the use it, Lewis Central as a template for the rest of the state and the country. This is the site today. This is right, this is where the ossuary was. This is 275. This is actually on Lewis Central ground. And so the roadway is right here going around it. That is where the bones were removed from right there. So whenever I go by there, or whenever you go by there, hopefully you'll stop and take a moment to think about at any, any point on your drive along that bluff, along Highway 275, who knows what's under the, under the dirt? Who knows what's under the ground there? Um, and there's another one. And that is the presentation for Lewis Central uh, Archaeological Site 13PW5. Does anybody have any questions?